Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lesson, I'm going to give you a very basic introduction to networking. If you already know about switches and routers and network topology, you can just skip right on ahead to the next lesson. But if you're brand new to networking, then I'm going to give you a quick overview here. So let's say that we've got an office which is in New York for our company. In that office, I'm going to have end hosts like PCs, a server, and a printer, like you can see here, and they're going to need to be able to communicate with each other. So for that, I'm going to put in a network switch, and I'm going to cable my devices to that switch with Ethernet cables. And that's what a switch looks like. There's a Cisco switch. You can see it's got a lot of parts in there so that I'm going to be able to connect in a lot of devices. The switch is what allows connectivity on my local area network. In that office in New York, maybe I've also got a laptop, which is going to connect in over a wireless network. So for that, I'm also going to have a wireless access point, which is also going to connect into our switch. And that's what a wireless access point looks like. So I've got all my devices in New York now. They can all talk to each other. I've built a local area network. A local area network is a network that connects devices which are in the same local area, like in a single office or maybe a university campus. Okay, I don't just want my end hosts in my office to be able to talk to each other. They're going to want to communicate with other devices out on the internet as well. So for connectivity out there, I'm going to need a bit more of an advanced device, which is a, a router. A router is able to make advanced routing decisions to route traffic between different areas of your network. That's why it's called a router. And this is what a router looks like. You can see it's pretty similar to a switch, same kind of size. Typically, it will have less physical parts on there and it will support different types of ports so that it can connect different types of networks as well. Next thing, we know that there's going to be bad guys out on the internet, hackers who are going to try to attack us. So we need to guard against that. So we're going to put a firewall in place. And this is what a firewall looks like. Again, you'll see that our different network devices tend to look very similar to each other, but they fulfill different tasks on the network. The firewall secures the different parts of our network from each other. Okay, so that was our New York office for local area network and its connectivity out to the internet. In a larger company, we're not going to just have one office in New York. In that example here, let's say we've also got an office in Boston as well. In Boston, we're going to have a similar kind of setup, the same kind of devices in there. We're going to have the local area network in Boston, and we've also got local connectivity to the internet from Boston as well. Now, because we're the same company, I'm going to want to have connectivity between my New York and my Boston offices. I want the end hosts in both of those sites to be able to communicate with each other. It is possible that they could communicate securely over the internet if I set that up. But another way of doing it is I could maybe put in a dedicated connection between my two routers in both sites, and that's going to give me my wide area network connection between my different offices. Okay, so that's a, a really quick overview of networking. And the point of networking is to allow that connectivity between our different end hosts on the network. So looking now at the characteristics of a network, we've got the topology. If I just go back to that previous slide, this is an example of a network topology diagram. The topology is how the devices are connected up to each other. Other characteristics is the speed of the network. Typically, the faster the network is, the more it's going to cost you. 
and cost is itself a characteristic as well. Things that will affect the cost are the type of devices you have in there, the size of the network, the different technologies you're using, etc. Other characteristics are security. I mentioned the firewall in the previous slide. We're not going to just have security on our firewall though. We we'll also have security features on our routers and on our switches and we can have other security devices such as intrusion prevention systems as well. Next, we have availability. We're going to want to make sure that our network always stays up. And for mission critical components in the network, typically we don't want any single points of failure. So we will double up on those components so that if anyone fails, we've got an alternative component that will still be up and running. Scalability is also important. We want to design the network in such a way that it's easy for it to grow with our company without requiring a redesign. And reliability, similar to availability, where we want to make sure, again, that the network is going to be reliable, but it's going to continue to work. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.